Welcome to this short session, a conversation from the Helen Hamlin Center for Design. I have the great honor of leading the center, directing the center. My name is Rama Garawo, and I am from the Royal College of Arts. Hi everyone, my name is Melanie Flory, and I've been honored to be offered the position of Associate Research Director from January this year at the Helen Hamlin Center, and it's been an amazing eight months. Over to you, Rama. So I would say that apart from being co-workers and researchers and creatives and instigators, Melanie and myself are also friends. Um, I have a design background and Melanie, tell us a little bit about yours. Well, I feel I know you better than I know myself sometimes. <laughs> so um, I'm a neuroscientist neuroscient and a psychologist and I met Rama about three years ago and there was no question that I was signing up on the creative leadership, uh, you know, the, the, the leadership program that he had founded. And I'll talk a little bit about that because you can read about me on, on our website. But the reason why I joined the, uh, I decided to work with Rama on creative leadership, and he will tell you more because Rama always brings his whole self to creative leadership. And I think this is a wonderful forum for you to see. I can talk a little bit about the neuroscience, but what he will bring is beyond the boundaries of his directorship and the boundaries of academic research and writing in particular format, what Rama does is to build a storyscape that everybody can relate to, no matter where you are in your career, to what creative leadership can offer you. And today, I hope we will be speaking into that space of beyond uh, the boundaries of technology and what creativity can do when it's embedded in empathy and clarity. And what I as a neuroscientist can lend to this is that without um, the empathy and the clarity, uh, creativity can actually literally drive you into insanity. And this is why I joined this program. Um, I actually decided to be the scientist on it. I was invited to be the scientist on it because we have seen creatives gone mad. Um, and that's not a nice place to be. So this is, this is really a conversation of balance. The creative leadership model is about empathy, clarity, and creativity, and the interplay between the three of, of those values, they change according to day, time, pressure. But for this conference, for this Congress, we wanted to step beyond the computer, step beyond the digital and talk about these three human values that present and represent across humanity. Um, creativity is a right of every human being, but if it's not balanced by empathy and clarity, as you're saying, Mel, um, you know, you're, you, sometimes I feel your candle burning at both ends and in the middle, or your bicycle pedaling hard and getting nowhere. So can you tell us a little bit more about the, you know, the neuroscience of that interplay? You know, how do they balance each other? How do they sort of um, enable better education, better learning and better teaching? Um, creativity, clarity, and empathy are human potentials. You only have to look at a toddler to see these, these three principles, these three behaviors, these three ways of interacting, human interaction, it's there. Um, you know, the creativity of a toddler in 12 different ways to hoist myself up from crawling, right, to be able to walk. Um, the empathy that human beings teach a toddler by going to help them, you know, if when, when they're learning to walk, it's just a human, these are aspects of human behavior, they are aspects of our DNA. In terms of, of how these three come together, that's what we're working with, working with uh, at the center with. We're doing the research of how that these three things are not are something that can be developed and there's constant continuous development of these. There are sophisticated levels of development on a spectrum of each one of these. So for example, somebody who is starting off their career um, 
the clarity with which they approach problem solving might be very different from somebody who's got 20 years experience uh, in, in that same area. And this has not, nothing to do with the ability to learn or knowledge. They are actually how these pathways lie in the brain. But I think instead of boring you with this, what I'll do is to ask Grandma to actually tell you, you know, on a practical level and to give you some examples, because he has some great stories about how this works in real life. And the kind of people that come to our executive education courses, um, because Rama and um, Dr. Nanella, who, lead, who co-leads it with him, how they actually deliver this, this creative aspect, getting people to be equal right across the board in terms of expressing creativity and the skills they have at actually doing this and bringing this into li to life. It's a, it's a beautiful moment because we, we think of creativity as a human attribute. You know, if, um, if creativity is a cloud, design is the rain. Um, and I think, um, you know, it's a conduit, but creativity is something we are born with. And I know one thing that always inspired me, Mel, when you, you, you joined the program and added that science energy and entropy of psychology and social, social science, um, it, we, we sort of met in, the, we met in the, the core center of humanity. And one of the things I absolutely um, re remember you talking about is that um, creativity, empathy, and clarity can be upskilled. People would ask, it can't be really taught, can it? But actually it can be enabled. Neuro pathways can open. And I, I feel, in the design work that we do, a lot of it is experientially doing that. You can find your empathy level, for instance, the workshops that you referenced. We give people an exercise of, you know, think about when you need to get a stranger to tell you a secret. And sometimes this has been an exercise we've asked people to do, you know, ethically and safely within the past. And it's not so much about what sort of secret you find out, it's how comfortable are you doing that? Do you go to and find someone who looks like you or is the same age group or gender or has some other qualifier that you can identify with? Do you take them a piece of cake or the workbook from the workshop and say, I've been asked to do this task? So there are these little signifiers that every day can help us find that scale. So with Students, we actually do this exercise a lot for them to understand their level of empathic approach. And when you start to multiply that across um, exercises around clarity, um, exercises around creativity, the model starts to come to life. So we have about a minute left. And I just wondered if, um, Mel, if um, we can each just say one thing that we wanted to share with the conference around creativity beyond the computer. And um, to give you a little bit of time, I, I will start. And it's just to say that I think bringing it back to humanity, even if the mode of communication is digital um, or physical, bringing it back to human qualities of expression and enablement um, that's the most powerful thing for me in education. I'd like to sum up creativity is just look around you, just where you're sitting right now, look around you and look at those things, anything around you and pick up what is creative in that. Right now I'm sitting here and I've got a glass of water. What is that? What is the creativity that went around making this? you are already being creative just by engaging in imaginative thought. So we're all creative and it's definitely beyond a computer. And that's a beautiful ending to bring us to the now to the present moment. So thank you, Mel. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Left Eris, for organizing this and much love and light to you all. Bye for now. Bye.